Before you start painting, make very sure that you have added masking fluid to all the places where you want to preserve the white of the paper. And this includes even the thin twigs and the grass. Now in this painting, I've plotted in first all the tree trunks which are in the foreground. When it is dry, the sky is vaguely washed in as I want the background to have a very hazy effect. While the sky is still damp, drop in a variety of colors to indicate the various types of trees. Some places will be merged, while we also need hard lines to emphasize the tops of some of the trees. The trees get darker closer towards the rhino. Darken up the treetops so as to push the distant trees further back and continue around the shape of the rhino using dark green and purple. First lay the underpainting with a light yellow and light burnt sienna. Then use a large brush for the immediate foregrounds, leaving it streaky and in the horizontal. Using the cutting edge of the brush, stroke in some grass shadows with purple and leave to dry. Paint these trees in the middle tonal range with no detail at all except the top edges. Scumble the flat area with the side of the brush and touch in some purple for the shadows in the trees and to show up the light colored grass which also has shadow patches. This thicket is dark and shows up the very long horn beautifully. The immediate foreground is in shade. Now this way I've created nine perspective tonal ranges. See if you can see them. The horn has a dark shadow. Use a small brush and don't rush it here. This horn is the main focal point of the painting. The base color of the two horns on the forehead is burnt sienna. Then bring in some of the darker color but still leaving some of the brown showing through. The legs and the very light underpainting has already been painted. So here we are starting to plot in the tonal ranges on the body. Start with the lightest color first as these are much easier to correct than if you start off too dark. Carefully darken up all the while comparing what you do against the reference photograph. For the ears, paint the dark areas first and then fade out. Now don't lose the highlight on the edge of the ear. Now these are the lips of the white rhinoceros and are in shadow. Notice the touch of brown at the nostril. Carefully work on the tonal ranges on the face and body as these produce the 3D shape and contours of the muscles. Continue to work on the face and warm up the shoulders only. I normally paint the eyes first, but here I've left it practically to the last. Don't make the mistake of making the eye too big. After adding the creases under the eye, we can now begin to paint in more detail, such as the facial phones near the ears. Shadows also need strengthening in places. Let the painting dry and then remove the masking fluid and brush color into the twigs and thicket stems. Do that also with some of the grass. Mix a dark brown and paint the shadow sides of the trees and branches, adding in the smaller ones as well. The tree in the distance is painted much lighter. Use a rigger brush and paint in some dark grasses and use it for any other touch-ups. Please like this video if you have enjoyed watching it and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe so we can inform you when we bring out more tutorials like this one. If you would like to see the paint along version of this class head over to our website onlineartlessons.com Thank you for watching.